I have done something terrible, but I think I love it. I have added way too much buoyancy onto my character's physics, but it's kind of fantastic. Greetings, gentlemen and ladies, one dude dev team here. In today's video, we're playing around with fluid flux water simulation physics. Check this out. This is water fluid uh, flux simulation over a waterfall. How nice is that? That is crazy. And of course, it will fill up any water volume area that you have specified. Interesting thing also is that we can actually modify the uh, generator. I can drag him over here and you can see it actually affects the water in real time. I mean, that's so cool. Okay, let's simulate a creek filling up with water. Our water simulation is actually picking up on the geography of the landscape and filling it up in a totally natural way. Let's do that again. This time we're going to increase the water volume. Oh, <laughs> oh no, we're flooding. We're flooding the... We've actually created a bit of a lake. <laughs> Oh, man. Where there was once first a creek bed, now we have basically flooded the whole valley. I wonder how much of this valley we could flood. Oh, the FPS has dropped a lot. I think we've broken something. We cannot get above 5 FPS. Okay. All right. I've simplified our graphics down because of uh, video memory issues. Uh, let's see what happens this time. Frames per second, three frames per second, but it's working really cool. Well, the valley has started to flood. All right, time lapse, execute. So here we are up at 5,000 times regular speed. There is something weirdly satisfying about watching virtual water flood a virtual mountain. Well, I would say that's flooded enough. Okay, so in this map, we have a need for a little bit of daylight first. Let's drag in ultra dynamic sky and let there be light. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so now I actually think it would be probably nicer at maybe a different time of day. There we go. That's like early in the morning and we have that beautiful, look at that rainbow. Wow, that's beautiful. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take away some of the elements of this rather pretty stylized map. Uh, but we don't need them. We don't need them because we're going to use our very own uh, dynamic fluid. We've got the river spline. Oh, yeah, we're going to need to get rid of that. Okay, there we go. We'll delete that. Oh, all right. So now we have a perfectly beautiful and unfilled landscape ready to be filled with water. And I have positioned our fluid flux body over the entire lake. Now we just place our fluid flux actor into the level. This will generate our source of water flow. Oh, no, it's, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, okay, it's working. It's working, it's simulating. So the water is, ah, uh slightly leaking through some holes but for the most part i think this is basically working and i <laughs> um maybe we had too much water uh maybe too much water too fast i think that might have been the issue it was just overflowing from the seams so this time that looks a little better look at that we've got mist we've got mist falling flowing uh that's cool, that's really cool. So let's see what happens if we just allow this to fill the entire body. Fast forward mode, prepare to fast forward. Fast forward speed is actually 9,999%, which is the fastest amount I could speed things up in Adobe Premiere, but that's okay. That's okay, we're almost there. We're filling up the body of water. It's getting fuller, it's uh, slowly getting fuller, not not that exciting. Okay, let's do something else. Do 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 All right. <laughs> so we have now learned to create a waterfall, a lake, a river. Uh, we've flooded a small valley. I think the only thing left to do is flood a small village. Yes, let us flood this small, beautiful, innocent-looking village. But where are all the villagers? 
We shall need to get some villagers before flooding is to be at all satisfactory. So the first thing we need to test and figure out is how our fluid will interact with objects so that we can make our characters respond to when water hits them like these boats are now floating on the water. That is working. Wow, look at those reflections. That's so pretty. <laughs> wow, wow. This is, this, is, this is me doing Unreal Engine development, losing hours, just, just like, wow, look at that. Okay, so we have found our volunteers, our villagers. They don't do too much just yet. As you can see, if they get hit by a flood, that is because they are not enabled with any sort of character physics yet. We have this guy here. He's out for a merry stroll. The rest of them are just sharing stories about how big of fishes they caught. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to bring a little bit of life to these characters before we murder them. To do so, we need to create a new character blueprint. The work we're going to need to do here is first add a skeletal mesh component. So I'm just going to put that in like so, and now we have our character. What we need to do is give these guys a little bit of animation. So here I'm setting up the character's basic animation blueprint, nothing too fancy. We just want him to run and walk around. Now what we're doing is creating an animation blend space. So if he's not moving zero speed, he'll be standing still in his idle position. And then if he's moving a little bit faster, he will transition into a walking animation. And if he's moving even faster still, he will transition into a running animation. So we have a nice smooth blend between those states. So now that we have our animations created, we attach it to our character, do some positional alignment so that his feet touch the ground. What we need to do next is implement a sort of basic wandering around script so that the character will actually move around our environment a little bit. And that should do the trick. Let's see what happens. Our character should start moving around. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh, I think, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's not the way a human is meant to move. The more I watch this man move around on his water ski shoes, the more I can't help but wonder if walking is indeed the superior form of transportation. This man has got it figured out. If you live on a flooded island, you are going to want to be able to water ski around on your shoes. This is just so much better. Okay, character debugging has been done and our guy is walking around as normal as a real human guy. Dick -a -dick -a -dick. Okay, now we've added a little bit of code that will generate a random NPC villager, even though it looks like the same guy over and over again. We're going to generate a random one when we begin play. So let's see if this works. There we go. All right, there's our villagers wandering around totally unaware of the calamity to come. So we're going to take those floating physics and apply them to our characters as well as a character rag doll. So when our character uh, gets interacted with by water, they'll rag doll. They won't just, they'll stop walking around. They'll just rag doll. Okay, let's start by now placing some of our happy little villagers in their happy little and safe uh, village where uh, I'm sure no calamity will ever occur. Once we click play, these guys should all become random villagers and start wandering around. Dicka dicker. Okay, I think that should be enough. Happy little villagers wandering around their happy little town. You know, they don't do a lot, but they're happy. They wander around, there's no work to do because we haven't programmed them with any of those things. All they get to do is wander around and enjoy their beautiful uh, village. Isn't that nice? So now I'm downloading a screams and shouts pack from the Unreal Engine Marketplace forum. No reason. No reason at all. Dee 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 dee. Okay, I think we're going to need to just drop a nice little ambient sound into the scene. Now this is a good one here. Some peaceful chirpy little birds. Well, isn't that lovely? And now we just need a sound for the water. So, we don't, so we've got that one here and we're going to put that into our sound cue and change the pitch multiplier down to a little bit lower so it's a more bassy, powerful sound. Let's see what we got. Yep, I think that'll work. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, I think we're ready. I think the last piece is to decide where to put our water. And most logically, I think right in the center of town, uh, makes the most scientific and geological sense. So that's where we're going to put it.
so much for watching my video. If you liked it, uh, subscribe. I'm going to be doing more shenanigans like this in the near future. And not to worry, no innocent villagers were harmed during the making of this video. I'll see you in the next one.